Let's try that again. Bug Crafts episode 91. What's up everybody? My name is Amanda, but you may know me on the internet as Mando Bug, and this is my crafty channel here on YouTube where I talk about the things that I am making. In this video, I have crochet, knitting, and spinning. Alright, starting the shot with something I've learned. This week, I haven't quite completely learned it yet, but I'm in the progress in the process of learning how to make my own website. You guys, I finally did it. I took the plunge. I bought my domain, mandobug.com. Of course, like, are you surprised? <laughs> but I have a website now, and it's very, very rough. It's so rough and cut right now. I am using WordPress to create my website, and I don't know why I thought it was going to be easier than it is. Um, not that it's hard, but making it visually appealing <laughs> is more difficult than I expected it to be. So I am working on that. But now that I have a website, I have an official professional email, which is info at mandobug.com. So there is a more professional way for you to contact me if you feel the need to contact me for any reason. So that's kind of cool. I'm very excited. I'm hoping that it can be a landing page kind of for everything that I got going on. Um, I want to be able to put the show notes for this podcast on there. I have my woolly fur dog spinning business that I'd like people to place orders through on the website. Um, I will be opening a Etsy shop for my stitch markers. Um, which will kind of everything will be found there. And then I also design patterns, right? So I want my free patterns and pay for patterns to kind of be featured on the website as well. Kind of like an all collective everything I got going on in one place. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. It's still very much a work in progress and I have a long ways to go. I know it's not going to be beautiful overnight. It's I've got weeks, weeks of work. I just have learned. Okay, here's one thing I really learned. Um, setting up a website, I should have been more focused on the content versus how the content looks. Both are extremely important, but I spent like three hours making an infographic that didn't even work out because I am not a graphic designer and I apparently suck at it really bad. <laughs> and so I spent like three hours making this graphic infographic. It turns out it didn't even fit. I wasn't, I because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, the place for it was only 300 pixels by 300 pixels, which is small. And so by the time it got put where it was supposed to go, you couldn't see or read any of the info. <laughs> I was like, oh, what a waste of three hours. But I mean, obviously I learned. I, it's a learning experience. But I'm like, I need to chill. Chill out on the infographics and just get my content posted. Get my free patterns up there. Get all of the show notes backlogged into the website versus on my old blog. I think I'm just going to ditch the old blog. Um, I can do more on WordPress. So... I'm working on transferring content now versus trying to make it pretty. I can make it pretty later. Um, all right, moving on to finished objects. You guys, I have my January socks done. These are Trekking Sport Toe, Heel, and Cuff and Trekking XXL Body. I'll get you a little close-up here because this yarn has a ton of texture to it. Like I said, when I looked it over, it appears to be a cable-plied four ply cable plied yarn which gives you a ton of texture now that texture I've only worn these once that texture does um, make the yarn scratchier uh, trekking XXL is not a like super soft merino sock like you're used to getting from the Andy Dyers it is like a hardy sock not as soft and I found that the cable ply makes it even scratchier but not so much so that I can't wear them but um, it's definitely different than when I slip my feet into the um, merino sock yarn that I've knit socks out of. So uh, I think that was worth mentioning. I did have a little mess up here. Oh, let's see if you guys can see. Right between the leg and the cuff, uh, this dark yarn I was knitting at night. It was pretty dark. I think I m missed a stitch when I knit my first row of the cuff because when I went to weave in my ends I had a hole and a hole as if I never knit that stitch and so I kind of like sewed it shut and then I was really mad because I'm like well now how long are these socks gonna last? <laughs> 
but I'm over it. it they're fine. Um, I do wish I went down to double zeros. I will be going down to double zeros, not on the socks I have on the needles now, but my next pair. I'm putting it off, but really these are not a tight enough gauge. And when they, when I put them on my feet, there's kind of some gaps in the sock, which means they're going to wear faster and they're not as warm. So I did uh, 12 stitches on each needle, cast on, increased by 4 stitches up to 52, 52 stitch sock, um, fish lips kiss heel, and just one by one cuff for about 20 rows. So January socks are done. I am participating in the Yarngasm box of socks for 2018, so one pair done. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I also finished my spinning. So, I shared a little bit about this on my last video. I have recorded the entire process of spinning both of these skeins. That will probably be edited and uploaded the day after this video is edited and uploaded. But I've got um, two one ounce mini skeins that I spun from a bat from Edgewood Garden Studio. There was no colorway name, just a beautiful purple blue bat. Now, this one on the top here is one ounces and it's 78 yards. So that put this one as a sport weight. The one on the bottom is one ounce and it's 103 yards. So almost 30 more, or it is 30, yeah, almost 30 more yards. And that puts this one at a fingering weight. So I can't I can't run my experiment guys because I have a sport weight and a fingering weight. The one on the top was the one that I spun from the fold and the one on the bottom is the one I spun short forward. So I've got a woolen spin on a woolen prep and a worsted spin on a woolen prep and I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to run a little compare and contrast experiment which I'm able to see in the skein but I really wanted to knit them up and compare and contrast them in socks but I just don't think it's a good idea because they're not the same weight. But I can tell you, um, and you can kind of see it a little bit in this game, um, because I had never spun from the fold before, that my my from the fold skein is more inconsistent, and my worsted skein is more consistent um, and also much, much thinner. And I think that was because of just how comfortable I was with the short forward draw. Um, and then really this yarn is a little bit more smoother to the touch it looks smoother this one is a much more fluffy to the touch and it looks fluffy and um, some of that has to do with the inconsistency but um, I can I can definitely see and feel a difference um, and I think that it's gonna make a big difference when it's knit up so definitely it does um, there is a noticeable difference between the um, spins on the woolen prep. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these now. Uh, they're just going to go into my hand spun stash and maybe throughout the rest of this year as I continue to do the year of the mini skein challenge, uh, I'll have some other mini skeins that can pair up with the different weights. Um, I'm not going to beat myself up too bad that they didn't end up matching. That's what I get for not using a spinner's control card. I feel like I say that all the time. I need to just, I, I need to do that if I am so concerned about having matching skeins. So, yeah, my spin is done. Uh, the only other things that I finished this week are some stitch markers. Now, I don't have an Etsy shop open yet, but I am planning on opening one up. Probably, it will probably be ready by next week or in the next two weeks. Um, I'm waiting on some business cards and packaging stuff to come in. But I made some more coffee bean stitch markers. And if I've been in contact with you about sending you stitch markers, they're not on their way yet. I will let you know when they're shipped. Um, but some of the ones I made up will be the ones going out. I'm still kind of product testing. I've been using my coffee bean stitch markers and I realized that I much I prefer it much better if there's a small jump ring between the stitch marker and the um, the larger jump ring that goes on your needle. Um, I don't like the bean so close to the stitch marker loop so I've added a smaller loop in between to let the 
charm dangle just a little bit further down and I find I prefer that better but of course as I send out all these stitch markers there will be a link to a survey so everyone can give me feedback so that I make what people want um, oh so I am actually going to be donating some stitch markers to um, Jade of the So Perfect Pearls spring make-along so she's hosting a spring make-along over on her Ravelry group and I have offered to send her some spring themed stitch markers so I started playing around with some flowers and I made a small variety some of them I was happy with the quality some of them I was not so um, some of those are tossed to the side and some are they've got my stamp of approval but I do need to make some more up that are of the quality that I am aiming to give and sell so um, also, the white ones, I didn't realize it till after I baked them that that was actually translucent clay. I keep my translucent clay next to my white clay and they look the same before they're baked. But after you bake the translucent clay, it becomes a little bit translucent. So uh, those white flowers are not okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's all a learning pro. It's all a learning um, process. Learning pro yes, learning process. Um, Moving on to works in progress. I have been working on my Maxfield sweater again. So actually, let me show you the pattern because I have it printed. This is the Maxfield cardigan. It is an open cardigan that is of the style that I wear all the time. I've got like two store-bought sweaters in that style with kind of the heavy um, band, usually called button band, but there's no buttons on a cardigan. Is there another name for that? I've always called it the button band, but kind of like a thick heavy button band so that it doesn't close but it like covers your chest <laughs> um so i let's see if i dig it out of my big old bag um well here's the second sleeve so you start with the sleeves and so i've started my second sleeve and if i dig let's see if i can dig in here i know know my other sleeves in here here it is okay so I've got one sleeve completed, and surprisingly, I am short. I'm 5'2", and I was actually able to be comfortable with the length that she recommended in the pattern. She said, you know, up to desired, up to 19 inches or desired length, and 19 inches ended up being perfect for me. So you've got your little cuff, and then you've got your chevrons going, and I'm just loving the way this is knitting up. I'm loving the... Um, fabric that I got with my gauge and um, I'm striping the dark purple it's Andy dyed a stream and color everlasting DK in the galaxy colorway and all three skeins I got were very different so I'm alternating every other row and you can see that it's not quite striping but you can definitely tell the the skeins don't match but um, that's been going well and so like I said I've started my second sleeve and I'm excited to finish the sleeves and start casting on the body. Um, I was just pre like testing out my charms again. So this is not where I was last week. I just threw it on there to see how it feels, how it looks, how it holds. This is one of the cookie stitch markers that I... Whoa, we're like super blown out. I'm just not sure it's going to show up. It's just so bright. I turn the light off. I turn, I close my blinds. I've got nothing. Um, that's a little better right there. You can see it's got a little confetti heart on it. But it's just a little Valentine's Day themed sugar cookie that I made. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm very happy with the size and the weight and how everything's holding up. So I, like I said, I've been testing my coffee bean stitch markers as well. And, um... I don't like how I just have the stitch marker <laughs> cover my face. I just have the stitch marker straight on the charm straight on the stitch marker and like I said on the new ones I've put an extra small jump ring in between them so they're not right on your stitch marker. Um, so yeah, the contrast color is Dream in Color Everlasting DK as well in the Dream On colorway. I'm knitting these on US size. Five, which is no yeah size four which is a size down from what they recommend which is the five that's why I was off um, cuffs on three so it's a nice tight fabric and I'm very excited 
to be working on this cardigan. Um, and I'm loving the colors that I chose. I, I don't have any purple uh, cardigans in my wardrobe. All of the cardigans and sweaters I've knit have been gray, and one of them is gray and blue. Like, ooh, and outside the box there. So I'm excited with the purple. It's going to be different, and I think it's wearable. So um, my other work in progress are my February socks. So I have cast on my February socks because I've got the I've got the mo I got the sock knitting mojo. I've got the steam. I might as well forge ahead. So these are very very fun. Uh, I cast on the toe using Trekking Sport, and it was either 1400 or 1401, which is the, they're white. And then the body is actually um, Zitron Art Deco in the color four which I thought screamed Valentine's Day. So I did have to, because I, I knit my socks two at a time, I wound it into two balls. And then to make sure they started at the same point, I wound off, one, let me show you my two sizes. I had to wind off a bunch off of this ball to make sure they started at the same point. But I went ahead and weighed it, and I'm, I, don't, I don't ever use a whole skein, and I've actually found when I use contrasting toes, heels, and cuffs, I can get myself two pairs of socks out of one color. Uh, but unfortunately with this, the way that these are self-patterning, I won't be able to get two pairs of matching socks, but I can have a pair of matching and then a pair of mismatched, or knit that pair for my daughter, whatever. I don't mind mismatching socks, but I prefer the matching. So. These have been a lot of fun. I've got some more pink and gray coming up, so I'm curious to see if it's closer to this stripe or if it's going to be a little different. I've got some red coming up too, which I haven't knit red at all yet, so definitely long color repeats in these socks. Um, I'm probably about an inch away from putting in my heel, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but I've really been enjoying getting these socks. With the, with the self-patterning, especially because I have no idea what these are going to look like, I just, like, oh, what's next? What's next? Uh, so, February socks are coming along. So moving along to design time, I finished the basket that I was talking about last week for the March Crochet Along Together with Scassell. So I have designed a springtime basket using five skeins of Haiku Woody, which is a cotton abaca pulp yarn. It is um, it's a plant-based fiber. It's very like rough and sturdy and durable. So I thought a bag or a basket was going to be a great fit for this yarn. I just kind of got a sturdy base going with some color work up the sides with the handle, which would be best if you put a little bit of wire or something to add stability to that handle. But I'm very excited to be hosting this crochet along. It will start the first week of March. Um, we're working on getting, I sent the basket off to photography and um, finishing up the finalization of the pattern and then um, getting that page up on Ravelry so um, anyone that's interested in joining along can add it to their library so they can get the updates when the pattern is released. The way the crochet alongs work is the pattern is released over four weeks. It's not a mystery but the entire pattern is not given all at once um, so you kind of get like pieces of the pattern to crochet along together and each week comes with a video to help with the pattern and the techniques that are involved. Uh, this basket, um, I've got a bunch of color management and color work techniques to share, as well as how to do the reverse single crochet or crab stitch. So if you're interested in learning any of that, definitely consider joining along in the March Crochet Along Together CAT, for short, um, with me um, coming in March. Then also, I've been working on my tank top. So this is a tank top design I'm working on out of Cattails yarn, and this is in on her merino silk base, and it's in the colorway the Great Pumpkin. And I finished my first um, section, this little I don't know top piece. So I measured, you know, my body. I put it on where I think it's gonna lay, and I'm very happy now. Finally 
after like doing it and ripping it out six times I'm happy with the shape I'm happy with how it seems to fit so I've started the second piece um, I just have like a tiny bit of strap so I'll make the second piece and then I'm gonna be connecting them adding stitches for the underarms and the back and then it's just and connecting the strap in the back as well then it's just going down um, I haven't decided how much shaping I want to put into the tank top yet I think that I want a little bit of decreases under the bust just enough but not too much that because I I don't like a perfectly a line tank I like it to be a little fitted but not too tight around my waist um, I have a, I have a big I have big hips my waist is an okay size, but my hips get rather large in comparison to the size of my waist. So A-line is usually what fits me best, but I don't like a straight A-line from the bust. So I'm going to have to play with, um, I'm going to have to do it like eight times, I'm sure, uh, testing out some decreases and ripping it out and seeing what looks, feels, and fits best but I'm very excited about how this is working up I am crocheting it with a 2.5 millimeter hook and a, this is linked double crochet so it is not see-through there are not the holes that you typically get with a double crochet and I've really been enjoying that and um, so yeah I'm really excited to see how the rest of this tank top plays out so that's all I have for crafty stuff. Oh, real quick, um, what I'm wearing. I am wearing my Exploration Station. This is a pattern by Stephen West. This is the first time I ever knit brioche and fell in love with brioche and the stitch and the characteristics of the fabric and the fact that it's reversible. Um, I knit it using various Madeline Tosh Merino lights. So I'll definitely link it down below if you're curious. I'll link my pattern page that's got all of the details. But it was a fun knit and I love it. I love the colors. It goes with everything. I like to wear traditional shawl style because it fits well. I like the way it looks and it's warm. I do though. Every time I put it on I'm like how cool would this be if it could be turned into a cardigan. Just because I'm like, you could just attach it under the arms and it could be, or even like um, some of those ponchos that have the joined armholes, that would be, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, so yes, that's what I'm wearing. Uh, now on to Let's Chat. So this is my less crafty related section of my channel. So if you're taking off, I will see you guys next week. Otherwise, um, I don't have a lot. I did not go running at all this week, which is not good for my health, but it's just been nasty out. We've had rain and bad wind, and I'm just like, ugh, I don't want to go running in that. So I probably should just start exercising indoors, doing some, um, what do you call that? Is it, is it pi, <laughs> plyometric, plyometric, where you use your body weight as resistance to do some weight training. Um, I should probably be doing that. And you can still do cardio inside that's not running, so that's what I should do. Um, but yeah, other than that, I have been listening to Audible. So we, my husband and I share our Audible account, and we were gifted a subscription to Audible for Christmas. And each month you get a credit that you can use towards an audiobook. And so last month we chose uh, Ask Gary V, which is a business book that is kind of about uh, business in the modern business world. It focuses pretty heavy on social media and influencer marketing. So if you're into any of that stuff, check it out. I, it's read by him, which is really, really cool when the authors read their own books, especially because he's not someone that does well writing. He does better speaking. And he definitely went off freestyle on this book and updated some of his answers because technology and... Um, business has just changed so much with the change in technology that some of his answers are no longer accurate or relevant. So uh, I really enjoyed that book and so this month though we got No Ego by Cy Wakeman. Now this is a an HR professional with a background in psychology so it's a it's a very interesting book. Again it is more business based. It's more about um, 
egos in the well no ego in the workplace but I feel like a lot of it can be applied to your personal life and just how you think and carry about yourself as well but the overall theme purpose of the book seems to be to help businesses uh, kind of clean up um, the drama in their workplace and um, get results so I've really been enjoying reading it Re uh, not reading it but listening to it though um, as a nice change from the grow your business aspect and grow and market your business aspect into the because um, this is still grow your business related but it's um, more HR psychology related and I've, I've been enjoying that and it definitely makes you think there are um, times where she explains scenarios and it just really hits home to me like oh yeah I would do something like that and now I should shift my focus from like um, you know sometimes you can think of yourself as being a victim in a situation versus how you're choosing to act in a situation and um, I don't know I'm not an expert on this at all but I have really been enjoying it so and then I have had some people talk to me about libraries having audiobook systems. Um, and I really appreciate um, you guys bringing that up. I have signed up for my library's audio um, app. I guess different libraries choose different programs, systems, apps, whatever you want to call it. Uh, my library system uses OverDrive. And so I've got some books that I've put on my wait list. I've got on the wait list and hopefully those will come up soon but it is nice to have the audible subscription because I can get exactly what I want when I want it and a lot of these books that I'm interested in have just been released and those are a lot harder to get your hands on in the library if they're available in the library I funny side note my library's audiobooks I you can it, they show you how many books are under each genre and I've definitely found that I am all about the um, non-fiction books. I'm like all about non-fiction and learning. That's just where I am at in my life now. I used to listen to and, and read a ton of fiction, but I just, I, as I get older, I find I lose interest in things that aren't real. <laughs> it sounds horrible because it sounds like my creativity and imagination is dying, and that's not the case. I just, um, I'm focused on, I don't know, progressive de personal development. <laughs> so anyways, uh, the genres. I would say, I'm trying to remember the number exactly, but it was close to like 70% of the audiobooks are fiction romance novels. And I was just like, oh, I'm not interested in that at all. It reminds me of my grandma. My grandma uh, stopped reading when her eyes got pretty bad and so she started getting books on tape. She would get these big plastic like containers full of cassette tapes and when she would drive us to church she would be listening to her audiobook and it was so boring. Um, because it was romance and it wasn't interesting. It was oh, in the lawyer's office having a conversation, adult conversation. I was like eight, didn't care. But I do remember now that I'm older, times that she would like turn it off. And I'm like, why'd you turn it off? Now I realize that it was, it's a romance novel. It, at points it gets inappropriate for children. <laughs> but yeah, she would carry around giant, giant plastic things full of cassette, books on cassette tape. But um, that was total, total tangent. Um, so yeah, that is my let's chat for this week. <laughs> Do you guys have any recommendations um, for me as far as audiobooks go? I, it, like I said, I'm interested in nonfiction, business, self-improvement, um, psychology, kind of that route. Um, let me know if you have any recommendations. Alright guys, it was nice chatting with you. Thanks for spending some of your day with me and I will catch you guys next week. Bye!